The story begins with a love contest between the gods of Olympus several years before the Trojan War began. Poseidon, the god of the seas, and Zeus, the king of the gods, both fell in love with a sea nymph called Thetis. They both wanted to marry her, but according to a prophecy, the son of Thetis, by either Zeus or Poseidon, would be a prince much stronger than his own father. He would own a weapon that would be far more powerful than Zeus' thunderbolt or Poseidon's trident and would someday overthrow his father. Terrified at hearing this, Zeus and Thetis married Peleus, a mortal instead. Peleus and Thetis had a large wedding and invited many important gods and goddesses to the event. Ares, the goddess of strife and discord, was outraged when she found that she wasn't invited to Peleus and Thetis' wedding. She was sent away at the gates, so to take revenge, she threw a golden apple to the fairest goddess present. All three goddesses, Aphrodite, Athena, Hera, tried to claim the apple and quarreled over it until Zeus acted as mediator and had a Trojan prince, Paris, settle the problem. He would decide who was the fairest of them all. As the goddesses descended upon Paris, they all offered him bribes, but Paris decided to give the apple to Aphrodite. This act was the judgment of Paris, the reason why the Trojan War was fought. For choosing Aphrodite, Paris was given the most beautiful woman in the world, Helen. Paris went to Sparta to pick up Helen, but Helen was married to King Menelaus. Somehow, Paris took Helen back to Troy and when Menelaus found out about this, he decided to attack Troy. The Greeks gathered a huge army at Alice under the direction of Menelaus and his brother Agamemnon, who became the commander-in-chief. Both Achilles and Odysseus originally didn't want to go, but both were eventually persuaded to going with the rest of the Greeks. But the winds prevented the fleet from living. After speaking to the prophet Calchas, they had to sacrifice Iphigenia, the daughter of Agamemnon, to appease Artemis, who was causing these winds to blow. When the Greeks finally left Olis, they left Pelactetes on Lemnos because he was wounded, but he would become an important factor as the Greeks needed the bow and arrows of Hercules in Pelactetes' possession. The first Greek to live on the Trojan soil from the ship was Protesilos. He also became the first to die as he was struck down by Hector. Protesilos' wife Laodamia was so distraught with grief that Hermes brought him back to life for a few hours, but when her husband had to return to the realm of hates, Laodamia killed herself. The war continued for nine years without much change. Then in the tenth year in dispute between Achilles and Agamemnon, he nearly threw the balance in favor of the Trojans. Agamemnon took Chrysis, a daughter of Apollo's priest. Her father heard of this and begged for her return, but Agamemnon refused to release her. Upon hearing about this, Apollo shot ferry arrows at the Greek army, killing many Greeks. Achilles wanted to appease Apollo, then the prophet Calchas said that the only solution was to return Chrysis. At this point, Agamemnon complied, but not before taking Achilles' maiden, Briseis. When this happened, Achilles refused to fight anymore. Protoclus, a great friend of Achilles, had a plan to relieve the pressure of the Greeks. He wanted to use Achilles' armor to scare the Trojans off. The plan worked until Patroclus ran into Hector. Despite having Achilles' armor, the Trojans Hero was able to kill him. When Achilles found out about the death of his great friend, he wanted to avenge his death. He went to Hephaestus to get new armor, and then he rejoined the battle to avenge the death of Patroclus by killing Hector. After killing Hector, Achilles knew that his death was near. Achilles was vulnerable only in one place, his heel. Paris killed Achilles with an arrow guided by Apollo. After the death of Achilles, both Odysseus and Ajax wanted the armor of Achilles. The Greeks decided that Odysseus would receive the armor, causing Ajax to go mad and kill a flock of sheep. As he regained his sanity, he realized what he had done and he killed himself. Pelactetes, having been healed of his wounds, came back to fight with the Greeks. He killed Paris with Hercules arrows, but in order to defeat Troy, the Greek had to get into the city. Odysseus thought of a plan to make a hollow horse with shoulders inside. The rest of the Greeks would sail 
people behind the nearest island make it, it appear like they had given up. Only one Greek, Sinon, remained behind to tell the Trojans that the horse was an offering of Athena and it needed to be inside the walls of Troy. Laocoon tried to remind the Trojans of the treachery and deceit of the Greeks. As he finished, two serpents crushed the life out of Laocoon. The Trojans told this as a sign from the gods and quickly dragged the horse into the city. The Trojans, thinking they had won, parted through the night. But then Sinon released the Greeks within the horse and they let in the soldiers who had just sailed back. They ransacked Troy. By the time the Trojans were awake, Troy was already burning. Slowly, the defenses of Troy broke down. By morning, Troy, once the proudest city in Asia, was in the ruins. The Greeks had finally won.